Hi, my name is Debbie Farinella, and I'm on the creative design team at Sizzix. And I'm here at scrapbook.com, excited to show you all of the new Chapter 2 Thinlet projects, showing you the different ways that you can create these adorable favor boxes. Using the floral wreath die, how cute is that for a table number at a wedding or a shower or any festivities? Showing you with our jungle shadow box the different parts you can do to create an accordion fold banner. Using our intricate dies, you can create a beautiful invitation or card, our labels with our rubber stamp. Using our 3D embossing folder Azalea, look how beautiful that is. Using ink, cardstock, and roughing it up with a distressed sandpaper, and also using our Hello Sunshine stamp set. Using our Jungle Shadow Box card set, I've created this cute little project using the multi-purpose platform, using the foam adhesive sheets, using our foam tape, as well as the Jungle Shadow embellishments. Here's the same exact idea using the center pieces, showing you the different things that you can do using the Jungle Shadow Box, as well as the floral wreath die set to create this cute little shaker card. When you're ready to create with any of our shadow boxes, the Jungle Shadow Box die set comes with three circles. That gives you the opportunity to do the three different levels to rise up and add a little dimension to your projects. So what I'm gonna do is use our sticky grid sheets. The sticky grid sheets that we have are the most amazing product that we've come out with in the recent months. It helps you position any of your words or letters, anything you wanna say in the center of your cutting pad. That way it stays down and it's ready to cut repetitively and you know it'll be even every single time. So what I like to do is peel it off. It's gonna be adhesive on both sides and it's very tacky. Peel it off and then you're gonna lay it on top of your cutting pad. Lay it down, smooth it down. And after you smooth it down, it's gonna be perfectly adhered to your cutting pad but it's very sticky. And what you don't wanna do, as you know, is ruin any piece of paper after you've die cut it. So what we like to do is when we lay it down, make sure it's no bubbles, we like to tap it on our clothing just to create a little layer of fuzz onto your sticky grid sheet. That way, when you die cut something, you go to peel it off, it won't tear or rip. So I'm gonna leave it like this. I like to keep it on here the entire time. I keep one, one of my cutting pads with a sticky grid sheet on it at all times and it's good to go every time I need to use it. So if you notice, with the sticky grid sheet, I am able to position it all perfectly. So I'm gonna lay down my uh, circles one at a time on my cutting pad. I'm gonna do the first one first, blade side up, and I'm gonna go ahead and create the first level of the card. This is the little shaker card that we'll be making. You're gonna position your paper centered it depends. If you want your window at the very top, you just position it up. But just want to make sure your circle is going to be centered. So that's about right. Bring it up a little bit. Since you need two cutting pads, one on the bottom and one on the top, remember this one with the sticky grid sheet acts as your bottom cutting pad, so you don't need an additional one on the bottom. I'm going to lay this cutting pad here. And this is our ocean blue cutting pad with glitter that's exclusive to scrapbook.com. So that adds a little fun to your making projects. So I'm going to run it through. You hear the crunching and crackling. That lets you know the action is happening and it's all going to be perfect. Peel it off. It's a little adhesive-y, so maybe I needed to add a little more fuzz to it. But at least it's not tearing my paper. It's almost like a post-it note. It, it's a forgiving, but it does uh, have a good adhereness to it. So here's this one panel that's perfectly cut. Now, instead of going ahead and removing this, I wanna make sure my center circle is perfectly set so and positioned perfectly. So I'm gonna remove the center piece. So with the die pick, I'm gonna remove the center circle, but leave the die in place. And you can save the circle for a later project if you like. So with this big die in place, my next piece that I'm gonna be cutting is the center size. I'm gonna lay it in here perfectly. Make sure it's centered right inside this one I just cut. That's down pat. Now, if I ran a piece of paper through, I would cut a ring. I don't want a ring. I just want another circle that's graduating in size down. So I'm gonna take that outer die off. So with my second color, I'm gonna lay that down. Perfectly centered where I position the other piece of paper. So I know it's gonna be right where it's supposed to be. With the correct side down, 
This is my cutting pad. I'm going to run it through one more time. Cutting it like this creates all the different levels that you'll need when you do go ahead and assemble your shaker card. And there's panel number two, cut perfectly, ready to assemble underneath the first one. Now I'm going to take this one off. So now that I've peeled off the center piece, I'm going to go ahead and use a smaller circle and lay that die blade side up inside of the middle one. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and remove the outer. So keeping one down while you're putting the other one down makes you, it's guaranteeing that your um, paper is going to be cut perfectly centered. Okay, so for my last piece, I'm going to lay this one down, same area, position in the exact same spot. This is my cutting pad on the bottom, and I'm going to be cutting the last panel that has the little window. Run it through the machine. And when you're cutting with these sticky grid sheets, if you're afraid that it's going to get all dusty, you can cover it with the part that you peeled off, the adhesive backing that peeled off of it. That way it'll stay um, perfectly clean, but the more the dust, the better. The only thing you want to do is, if it does get any particles on there, you want to make sure you take those off because sometimes if you cut something and you notice that there's little indentations in your paper, it might be because there's a little piece of paper that's stuck on there so you're pretty much embossed it on your next piece that you're cutting. Just like for a cutting pad. If your cutting pads start to warp and get a little scratchy and you notice if you're die cutting any kind of foil, those scratches will start showing up. That's when you need to replace your cutting pad. So back to the card. <laughs> So now we have all three panels. We have the larger one, the middle one, and don't worry that they're curled up a little bit. It's only because I had done the um, sticky grid sheet. After that, they're going to be perfectly fine because you'll be able to um, adhere it down with your uh, foam tape. So before I go ahead and emboss the front cover of the card with the Azalea 3D embossing folder, I like to mist up my little papers just a little bit with water. You don't want to totally saturate and soak it. It just loosens the fibers up a bit. So the embossing shows up nice and sharp and has a clean effect. So just mist it a little bit away from your work area. Go ahead and put in your embossing folder. So if you're familiar with our 3D embossing folders, you know that you only need one cutting pad. The technique of making these embossing folders, the plastic we use is a lot thicker than the original embossing folders, the 2Ds. So this way it's so much thicker that with the machine at the right panel and on the right platform, you only need one cutting pad. So with the binding side in, you're going to go ahead and run it through. And check that out. Look how detailed and vibrant those azalea pieces show through when embossed in the 3D dimension folder. So with our foam adhesive tape, I'm going to go ahead and border all four sides with the foam adhesive tape. That'll create the first dimension of the first layer. And with our adhesive tape runner, I applied a piece of acetate to create the area so when you do your little shaker card, all the goodness isn't going to fly out. So with just adhesive around all four sides and closest to the window, I laid down a piece of acetate. Okay, so for our back panel, our paper is textured on one side and smooth on the other. For rubber stamping, I like to stamp it on the smooth side. So with our Stamper Secret Weapon, instead of going like this and stamping it, assuming I have it perfectly positioned, I like to make sure I'm going to be precise. So I'm going to lay the circle last panel on top of the part that I want to stamp. That way I know my window is going to be perfectly centered and so will the message. I'm going to stamp it with our Hello Sunshine rubber stamp collection set and go ahead and press it down. So what you're going to do next is take your adhesive tape runner. I'm going to use our Sizzix new tape runners and I'm going to go ahead and adhere that down onto the part I just rubber stamped. Centered perfectly. Okay, what you're going to do next is you're going to take your foam tape and you're going to do it as close to the window opening as you can. So a little trick that I like to do is I like to bring it as close as I can here and do just a little snip. That way it creates a little, almost like a pleat or a seam, so it's not going to bulge up a little bit. You're able to kind of turn it. Another one. And then keep doing that continuously around the whole circle. Okay, so I've completed the entire circle with all the little slits. That way there's a little circular area going around and there's no bulging or rippling or buckling of the foam tape. 
You're also going to want to add pieces around the border. That'll make sure that all of your parts of your glitter won't fall out when you're shaking it. Now that you have all of your pieces ready to assemble, you're going to take the cover with the 3D azalea embossed pattern on top. You've already created the border with the foam tape, and now you're going to go ahead and peel that off. You can lay more than one layer of the foam tape on top of it, depends on how deep you want your dimension. But keep in mind, the thicker it is, the harder it is or more expensive it is to mail it through the post office, unless you're going to be hand delivering it. But the more the dimension is, the, more, the thicker it is. I think they consider it a package. <laughs> but so what you want to do, what I did on this one just to save time, I'm just doing one layer. So now I'm going to go ahead and lay the larger one with the azalea on top of the middle one. And the middle one is the one with the acetate little window covering. Go ahead and lay that down, positioned perfectly over your opening. And that one's good to go. So this is the fun part. What you're going to want to do is add all your sprinkles. If you're afraid that your sprinkles are going to stick to the adhesive, you can do that afterwards. Peel off the adhesive after you put your sprinklers in, sprinkles in there. But I notice that if I do the sprinkles now and start peeling this off, the card starts to shake and the sprinkles go everywhere. So just be careful. I'm going to go ahead and peel it off now. Peeling off my last piece, I'm ready to shake, shake, shake. So I'm going to go ahead and add my Nouveau sequins into the window area here. You don't want too much because you want them to be able to read that life is good. I'm going to go ahead and lay with the message down my life is good back panel right on top. And how pretty is that? Next we're going to do the embellishing to add the final touches to this card. So since I want to have multiple colors to go around the wreath of the opening, I'm going to cut all different colors on the same cutting pad at the same pass. So just say I want this one in pink, this one in the darker pink, this one also in the lighter pink, and then I need to have the wreath in the white. I'm going to go ahead, lay that down all on the same cutting pad, but underneath their perspective papers, and then I'm going to go ahead and run it through. All the crackling and crunching is exactly what you want to hear because that means you know what's getting its work done. So here you go. I got one flower, another flower. I've got my wreath that's perfectly cut. I think this could be something fun. I'm not sure what, but I would save that if I were you. And we got this wreath here, and we've got this flower. All ready to go. Inside of this flower, look at those cute little hearts. Those can be added too. So I've gone ahead and cut multiple pieces ready to adhere to the front of your card. However you'd like, you can completely cover your circle as a full wreath or just do it in a certain area of the wreath on the card. As long as you embellish it so the person who receives it loves every single part of it. So since part of the wreath goes on to the window opening, Unless you want it to be stuck down there, I would just do dots of glue around the outer leaf, the part that's going to be adhered to the azalea cover. If you'd run it through um, with our adhesive sheets, then the whole thing would stick, which isn't a problem. It's so cute, but these pieces would stick down, and I'd be afraid that it might stick down when it comes time for it to be mailed. So I'm just going to put a little dabs of glue on the parts that I know are going to be adhered to the outside of the cover. Put a little bit on my finger and dab it on each one. Go ahead and lay it down on top of your card. So I use some of our succulent dyes. I use some of our floral wreath dyes. But you'll notice on some of the pieces, there's areas that you might not need. So I wouldn't need this part. So I'm going to cut that stem off. And I'm going to add the other one on top of that. Cut that one off. I'm going to adhere them to each other. And however you want to plant your garden around this card, you can do it with leaves covering the areas that you don't particularly want shown. So the part that I just tore off, I don't think I want that on there. So I'm going to hide it with a leaf underneath it and bring one of the leaves on top of it. 
So after you do all the embellishing, adding a few little nouveau gems with more leaves, you're ready to deliver this cute little card to remind everybody that life is good. Thanks for watching. If you like this video and want to see more from scrapbook.com, please share, like, subscribe, and leave a message. Happiness is life handmade.